happy to announce that I'll be contributing a weekly opinion column to Now Lebanon, and I'll narrate the pieces here on the podcast. This week's entry is titled, The Anarchist and the Dinosaur. This podcast is made possible by the generosity of listeners and viewers like you. Kindly consider a contribution through Patreon or PayPal. Links are in the details box. Any amount is appreciated. And follow us on social media. We're on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. The handle, The Beirut Banyan. Rate and review us on Apple Podcasts. And to stay updated with video releases, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thanks for listening, and thanks for watching. I'm Rani Shatar, and this is The Beirut Banyan. There's good reason to feel old, walking through familiar terrain with family, friends, and colleagues that have aged, some of us better than others, strangers rarely strange, comfort and community embraced, united in a desire to see change, remembering 2015, holding on to memories from 2005, slogans and chants that inspired us, updated to each movement's rhythmic persuasion and prose, passion that persists as paralysis turns to collapse. The sentiment is the same. Rebuilding post-war, reclaiming our past, recapturing dignity once embraced and denouncing all that is wrong. The differences among us make us the majority each round. Independence 2005, You Stink 2015, All Means All 2019. Not the multitude of confessions we celebrate, Rather, the ideas we want to be exchanged. In Parliament, debating economic plans, addressing a social pact that needs adjustment, and a Senate that channels sectarianism to its rightful chamber. Yet corruption, incompetence, dysfunction, and violence now define Lebanon. The worst traits of any society on full display. Protesters continuing to challenge and fight for decency and justice. Less on the street today, and more online. But with time, the institutions we need to function have crippled to failure. It is important to acknowledge each try. When former Syrian President Hafez al-Assad determined our fate, following the civil war, through political suffocation, intelligence operations, and assassinations, we stood up and demanded an end to the occupation. Chants born out of March 14, 2005, were for independence, dignity, and reform. Samir Asir was March 14. Social justice and gentler economics made it a unifying revolt. Political parties that claimed ownership afterwards were given their chance once Syria's army and Mukhabarat left Lebanon. Yet they failed to live up to repeated electoral wins and embrace a hindered vision blurred to blindness. A shifting emphasis from sovereignty to accountability defined the years thereafter. The same issues presided, yet hesitancy towards addressing the last malicious capabilities narrowed the focus. You Stink in 2015 saw many of the same protesters back in Martyrs Square. Civil society now engaged through years of grassroots politics, expressing itself through Beirut Medinati, challenging unbearable corruption, environmental degradation, and the massive trash crisis. Those protests remained local to Beirut but they planted the seeds of what was to come. And four years later, a perfect storm of forest fires, failing currency, and a devilish dance to false unity among political foes tested our limits. Once a proposed WhatsApp text was floated in October 2019, a nation fed up with rampant failure, false promises, and fiscal collapse had its final straw. For the first time in Lebanon's history, Large swaths of the country rose up to a unifying chant, Kellon Yani Kellon, a meteoric crash that reimagined Lebanon, a revolutionary explosion rendering the dinosaur extinct. The old guard, lethargic, sluggish, and obsessed with confession, embodying our post-Civil War decay, derided as defunct on split screens across the country, symbolically hanged in Martyrs Square without martyrdom 
and slurred with splendor and sway, given no further chance to persuade, chance corroding their once feared authority. And from those ashes rose the anarchist. No phoenix this round. A fluid, scattered youth without leadership, made up of post-war millennials without memory of civil strife, unafraid of cautionary tales of clashes, checkpoints, and khatames, aware of earlier attempts at change, but disinterested in power-sharing lexicon and consensual governance, anti-sectarian at its core. The torch had passed from pre-war to post-war, and the bridge in the middle, my generation, expressed our cautionary tales. We acknowledged the youth's turn and turning away from older ideas, and we equally recognized their pose. We were all enraged. Anarchists rightfully criticized dinosaurs for enhancing our misery. But judging the multiple failures of 2005's reptilians without acknowledging Lebanon's last militia was short-sighted. There were journalists, thinkers, intelligence officers, and yes, politicians that had warned against a country that was becoming increasingly ungovernable. Yet their attempts at sincere dialogue were proven impossible with the constant threat of murder. Those earlier champions of accountability were assassinated one by one, by Hezbollah. Marching through 2005's collection of flags no longer resonates. We move beyond dynasties. But what ties the anarchist and the dinosaur together, among long-established party members and burgeoning grassroots revolutionaries, is that we live in a hijacked regime no movement can challenge. Civil society initially failed in addressing what we lost when we surrendered our independence to regional war. An overt caution towards Hezbollah's sensitivities was, in retrospect, misguided. But they are the one group capable of bridging the generational divide. Citizens who spent years thinking, writing, and lecturing on secularism, sectarianism, statecraft, and reform. Holding discussions in downtown's reclaimed city center cinema, expressing eloquence and tense throughout Martyrs Square, and echoing chants in our majestic and abandoned Grand Theater. And when the port blast on August 4 decimated Beirut, they swept glass from the streets and offered food and shelter to residents robbed of their homes. They stepped in where the state had opted out. We were all scarred from hosting a storage dump for Assad's brutal war. And we live in a country in freefall, a state that has lost control over its most sensitive sites, from its airport and port to its telecoms network and borders. A status quo of paralysis, robbing us from aspirations. An expression targeted again with Lukman Slim's assassination. The state that broke down in the early 1970s is the condition that remains. Authority determined by militia rather than institutions and army, and government defined by mafia rather than our most talented and brightest. Our security subjugated our sovereignty undermined, and our once celebrated prosperity replaced with ruin. The anarchist and the dinosaur are hostages to the same machine. One goes extinct while the other barely breathes, and any future revolt will be destroyed by the same formidable force that turned deliberation to death. That civil society has the experience and willingness to turn activism to political authority makes them the natural opposition. They rightfully turned their backs to the old guard years ago. They are guiding the youth through campaign strategies and upcoming elections. And when this country rises again, with millions of us in sight, it will face the primary obstacle that curtailed movements before, a proxy that inherited an occupation and the protector of our post-war disorder. <laughs>